the long and mischievous life of love, hatred, and fear, dedicated to the memory of George Floyd. Now the streets are quiet again, peaceably quiet, but it is the pause of the reloading, the stillness of a graveyard. It is the morning after for those without a future, viewing the hulk of strip malls charred to steel frame, shuffling through the shattered glass of the fragile consensus in the melted smell of tear gas weeping over broken dreams. It is the same twisted today that looks like the yesterday of a hundred or thousand years ago for those without a language whose hopes were turned to ash and swept by the apron shock keep into the ceaseless star stream. The damage done when the prospect of progress vanishes with the dust resettling, when we cease plumbing the depths of the human soul to find that broad territory in common. And as the clash of flesh exhausts its insanities, as the us versus them smashes together like dialectic atoms, the frantic synthesis arrives in time for the new tumult and the pieces pick themselves up and recompose sneak past the debris to find a way forward again, arresting the black hole collapse to the backward, leading the escape of runaways in search of a refuge from this most uncivil war. But the silenced ones know, oh yes, don't they, that the interregnum always ends and the relentless assault on meaning begins again, leading once more to another round of tweeted reprisals Across the broken landscape, the tectonic plates crack and separate, kin from kin, ethnic from ethnic, accord from conversation. We watch helplessly as words tap the algorithm and sentences juice the emotion, foreboding the passage of night swallowing the day. History, the bloody obituary written by the last of the last survivors. Language, a vehicle for unconditional surrender signed at the courthouse adjacent to the ghastly battlefield, bearded general to bearded general, victorious to vanquished, chain reacting all over the weaponized Volksgeist. There are no winners here, only those who lose less. But what if we relaunched the invention of the feeling? What if we sought where the tenderness may lie? What if we weren't beset by something so sad that it paralyzed? Or if we listened harder to those who had to bite their own tongues until they bled, to those who ended with the short end of the loaf of bread, those buried beneath the missing tombstones of the mass graves. What if the pure decision of the good Samaritan replaced the pursuit of the master race deal? Or if our human desires were not entwined like a crown of thorns inside the political economy of our times? Here at the apogee of our history, the latest great leap forward turns out to be a backward fall into more backwardness. The return to MAGA plantation greatness is exposed as another fake story of white buanas sipping lemonade on the porch, attended to by obedient dark continent subservience, such a human thing to, to do, to love fantasies that never were as they disappear in the rear view mirror. But the past survivals never stayed buried, do they? They ooze from the muck of the weeping mass graves, the rosewoods and tulses and Thibodeaux in 1919 arise from the cruel crypt of hate's harsh oblivion. White world memory tries to delete from the hard drive the silenced evidence of ethnocide and the unbanality of evil and the sin of looking away, every soul guilty of all the good that you did not do leaving us still groping toward a recognition of our real lives, our real history, the stipulated record of who really built this country, planted its fields, erected its towns and schools and cities, and laid the rail tracks to the future as the four horsemen howled their overwhelming questions. Are we here? Is this real? Are we sure? Am I real? Does here connect to anywhere? If E equals MC squared, then how am I still here? How do I find a reason to put one foot in front of the other? When will I uncover the words, consonants, and vowels needed 
to arrive at the source of something true instead of circling the lonely perimeter with longing for what I cannot have, for what I cannot taste and cannot kiss and cannot see except in fleeting glimpses of beauty, that elusive something that vanishes into nothing. Yes, I see it in your eyes, my love. All the disappeared lives that mattered reflected a thousand by thousand times. The ones who looked after the system, previous and present, blown like dead pollen across the centuries. I see it in my eyes, reflected in your eyes, my love. The present is everything and nothing utterly reusable in the grand mortar and pestle. Nothing lives forever, nothing ever will, not even you and I, my love, Pour, pawing through the leftovers to hoard what we can, to return and return as the dust of the double helix amidst the unraveling of this uncivilization. And you don't believe me, you say? You don't believe this is slithering through our DNA? Then why in the realization that we are everywhere and nowhere, why have all roads led from the many paths to here? Why for each history's moment does the crossroad fork yet again to anywhere but here? How do we find it within ourselves to rise from the breakfast cereal into the urgency of each tangled day? And why then do we fall down, we millions and billions, hearts beating fast like the ninth in D minor, contesting the birthright of where we were born as the fear and confusion plant their jeering flags amidst the fireworks of scorn. No, the streets are calm now, passably calm. It's dead quiet out there beneath the noise. Despite the rumblings of marchings from those who demand a future, despite the huddled masses barred at the border by the rusted iron lady, Despite the, divided, divided, despite the divided e pluribus unum of this violent mammal trajectory, we thought if we plugged our ears, it would leave. We thought if we clutched our bellies without malice, we thought if we arranged the words and paragraphs just so that we could pacify our death fears locked inside. But what if the fear, the thing most feared is that which we refuse to confess? that love is the strangest notion of civilization, proven to regularly run amok, kneeling at the altar of heartless entropy until one day we run out of luck. Yet love is also the molecular force that can bind, and what's bound gives the world its arrow direction. In broken search for that more perfect union, you and I, a chance for resurrection, for in the end, in the very, very end, we are here. Within the limits of our language, within the space between our opposable thumbs, stumbling toward governance within the parliament of hysterics, straining toward common ground, resisting the hate that tries to overrun all representation, standing in defiance of the trumped up charge and the profanity of evil exposed. And then, as the streets re-explode in their unpoetry of injustice, as we gasp over our brutal reacquaintance with the imperfection of it all, we discover that something still lives above that purple bruise behind the stars and below the crooked tree limbs swinging heavy with that strangest of fruit. Our prayers relocate the ACTG helix replicating with mercy and halo, haloed in pearls until finally we remember just before we extinguish, our kiss is for the whole world. Thank you.